Hi, Shanta. Welcome to the Transformer Series Season 2. It's a pleasure to have you with us today. It's the same here, Sudhir. Pleasure to be uh, in Transformers with uh, Pradhan and the group. So it's my pleasure totally. Thank you for inviting. Thank you, Shanta. Shanta, uh, tell me, you are the head of HR, CSR and internal branding at the RBL Bank. So is that uh, wearing one hat too many or do you see these roles as synergistic? Good question. So let me tell you, uh, Sudhir, that you know it's a it's it, this HR, CSR, and internal branding actually happened also because I've been part of the core team that set up this bank in 2010. Okay. When I joined in business, uh, one of the things that I realized is that you know managing people is part of the show. Whether you're in business or you're not in business, it really doesn't matter. So all these designations came along because we were creating an organization. So uh, why did internal branding actually come into being was that uh, I drove this whole initiative with our employees on a bottoms up approach, uh, which was basically to drive the vision, mission and values of the bank. And having driven vision, mission, values of the bank and recreating the entire branding around that, that's how internal branding happened. CSR happened because there was a mandate in 2014, and I'm so glad it did because, you know, this 2% of your average net profit, you had to plow back for CSR. HR happened because I was in business, I was managing people, and, you know, having had a huge time with people in general, I think the bank, when it's in a startup phase, has got multiple stages which it goes through. There are times when employees also want to understand where is their career going, what's in it for us. And we were an unlisted bank and we were just a year away from our listing. So I think HR happened to me because having been part of this whole setup. Now, why are they synergistic to stay with your question, Sudhir? I think community, you know, diversity and inclusion we constantly use in HR. Now, what is diversity and inclusion? It's all about giving back to community. When I looked at internal branding and I was trying to look at what are the mission and what are the pillars that we need to create, because I ran that in the bank, uh, we realized that there were four pillars to success. One is um, employee as a pillar, community as the cause, you know, which were two important things, customer as a focus and, you know, shareholder value. Now, when you look at all these four pillars, when it comes up, you automatically see that there are synergies. You know, you constantly hear a happy employee brings a happy customer. You know, a person who is exposed to diversity and inclusion in its upbringing stage itself will be a greater leader at work because we'll accept different facets of multitasking that are so critical and different diverse and inclusive people. Community, I mean, let's not, what is community? I mean, community build up. The work I do with, you know, Pradhan, for instance, it's all about women. It's about inclusivity of women. On a personal level, I work with transgenders. It's again about inclusivity. Then there is specially able. You know, our next school, which we'll be putting up is on specially able children. And we're going to adopt that school for inclusivity. How is this distinct? from being inclusive. So I think diversity and inclusion, working with people, going across caste, creed, et cetera, and not only caste, creed, but also gender diversity, and definitely branding ourselves to say we believe in it. I see a total synergy in all three because it's part of my goal sheet now for all employees. Community as a cause is part of their goal sheet. Five to 10% of their goal sheet carries that. And if I had not done HR, probably this synergy would not have happened. I would have been one silo focusing on the outside world and not focusing on the inside world. I think the inside world is about finding a purpose. So community as a cause, which is CSR and HR, employee as the pillar, there is, it's absolutely synergistic because I'm a human being first and then I'm a banker. So I see total synergy in the role I play. Some of your colleagues and some of your peers say of you, that uh, you are perhaps one of the most well-respected women leader of our times, humane, yet very professional, very competitive, yet collaborative. And they say she's a taskmaster, but at the same time, she cares for her people and ensures their well-being. So my, my observation is that you have been a banker and very engaged and committed business achiever for many years. 
Now, how did you think of making that transition from pure business to HR and CSR? And have you and how have you managed to balance the seemingly, you know, actually conflicting virtues of competition on one side and collaboration on the other side? You know something, I, you know, I, I think age catches up, right? Age also <laughs> plays a very important role. So let me not run away from the fact that as you grow older, you become more real, you know, because see, everybody can't be everywhere. Okay. And also, see, when I was born, I wasn't supposed to be a business person or an HR person. I was born as a human being, right? I am a human being, first and foremost. So what happens is when you box yourself, you actually stop the worldview of other things that are more impactful. And today, if you ask me from my entire portfolio, what excites me the most, it is CSR. To make that little difference happen, you need to first change your, your mind. You know, it's always about questioning your mind, you know, because every time I've realized that I've been on the other side of the balance sheet, there are softer elements, you know, which are so critical in this changing world. If you look at your millennials today, what do you think they stay with organizations which have a purpose? Because if they don't see purpose, they're not interested in your job. Mm -hmm. They're just not there. It's not like the way where I started my career because my qualifications, money, you know, the factors which mattered to me at that point of time is very different from the factors that matter today. Mm -hmm. Now, there are some people who are stuck in time, Sudhir. Mm -hmm. And I worry about the people who are stuck in time. So this whole personality of being a taskmaster yet being human is because I think people should know their purpose. At some point of time, your ikigai needs to be there. It could come after 50, it could come at 30, it could come at 45, it could come anytime. It could come at 22. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know when it comes to people. Like I remember interviewing a young guy, really young for CSR. And, uh, you know, in a stage, he was from a very good management institute and he had stepped out and he said, listen, I just was working in, you know, he was doing some data analysis and all of that very good profession he stepped out to get into social work mm -hmm. and i met him for having you know having a guy and i said what drives you at 32 to do something like this he says my love for animals he says just having a pet at home was not good enough and i realized that i could do so much more for this and that became his driving force and his passion knowing very well he would not make enough money uh, out of this uh, entire passion of his he married a girl who was equally interested in animals. Between the two of them, their entire purpose by 40 was to set up a stray center. Mm -hmm. All I'm trying to say is that when you can get evolved at such a young age, and when you see senior people walking up to you and saying they're still figuring it out at 40 plus on how their careers are going, because you make your job so much large that you become, you know, the kissa kursi ka, Mm -hmm. That kursi starts defining who you are after a particular point. I think it's about me. Mm -hmm. I'll outlive the chair at some point of time, right? You all have a retirement date. Some enforce, some uh, uh, goes by process. So I think this taskmaster piece is because I just feel, because of my experience and the way I moved, uh, you know, uh, jobs, I think it's important for people to understand that there is more to life to mm -hmm. just having a focus on career. Mm -hmm. As far as my um, competitive, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, I, I, you know, I'm a born salesperson and, uh, you know, it's been my, uh, it's been in my blood. I started my career selling microwave ovens door to door and uh, it hasn't been an easy career. Uh, so uh, having started from ground zero, if I wasn't competitive, I probably would not have reached a level where in life I can make an impact. Ultimately, it's important to be competitive, but not a, you know, the instinct should be killer instinct for work, not competitive at any cost. I will never be competitive at any cost. And I think that's helped me to move faster mm -hmm. to the other role because, you know, you're not competitive anymore, but you're competitive and competent in what work you want to deliver eventually to make an impact. My chair allows me to make an impact. I'm mm -hmm. not going to run away from let me make let me use the power to make an impact in someone's life stroke community stroke any customer anything that helps me to make an impact i think that's what excites me in this role i don't see it any different from business you know there i impacted a customer's revenue here i'm impacting a person's life 
right creating his career creating his future you know i think it's 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 absolutely synergistic okay as a woman leader who actually has been able to motivate large teams to achieve i would say sometimes almost inconceivable targets what according to you are some of the skills and values that make for a successful leader and uh, the second part of the question is is it more difficult for a woman to succeed as a leader uh, both either in the corporate world or in the development sector you know the whole thing about women you know that term women you know men is a part of the woman the word itself so uh, a man if you want to keep it singular uh, you know i've never looked at this woman piece as very serious stuff okay so let me be honest uh, to be it is really not impact okay i have never felt this pressure of being a woman i think i have looked at it as a far bigger advantage than anything else Mm-hmm. i'll tell you the reasons why because you know today i think it's about being a competent professional let me not demarcate i think the men go through the same problem okay it's not about just being a woman it has got its own challenges i think the men go through a lot of challenges mm-hmm. fortunately our laws are pretty pro these days to women you know whether compulsively or otherwise you know plus we have enough support through vichaka committee the posh you know there are so many aspects when i started my career in in the late 80s i don't think i had this support system so today women are competent as much as the men are and they both are in the same arena fortunately for me i have overlapped that generation and i've conveniently changed myself to the new age generation my best part of my career happened when the world was becoming very supportive to women mm-hmm. so i don't think we need to treat ourselves any differently whether it's the developmental sector or whether it's an organizational sector what makes us a little unique mm-hmm. is what i would like to draw out uh, is the fact that we have this whole nurturing thing you know which probably works nurturing aspect of ours does work you know whether you're a child who you know you've been you've had a sibling who's a brother you've always been nurturing to your brother so or you you know you've been empathetic to your parents i think those little qualities are little excessive when it comes to women am i saying the men don't have it i know men with greater iq than some women have i think the challenge that we as women need to look at when we look at leadership is first and foremost build trust the biggest challenge in life is when you don't build trust with your wonder or with your team members or with your peers the okay. moment i build trust it doesn't matter whether i'm a man woman or a transgender or anybody there is a sense of belief that she means well for me once i start with that premise that i mean well for you but sometimes in light of that you have to be non political you will have to be diplomatic where required like every man has to be you have to tell them that i mean well for you and once is one is you know your lip service cannot be the only solution i think i am a person with action so if today i do a cyclothon and we do donate miles to educate last year i did on foot during that period 1000 kilometers myself on foot which was a big uh, you know uh, effect on a person my age with you know and i'm i'm 99.99% a vegetarian having gone through putting through this the people watch you and say if she can do it at her age why can't i i'm just giving you as one simple example it is about leading from the front through action and i think what i have repeatedly done since i started my career was be action oriented not just sitting on your desk and telling people how do you do things mm-hmm. ultimately whether it's going to the community i have visited my community if it is going to all the branches remotest of branches you can i mean it's a it's a story in the bank mm-hmm. remotest of branches where we didn't even have loos mm-hmm. and toilets in good old days i used to travel by car to all these places i had such fantastic stories about eating with a driver in one of the rural villages because i was hungry and i wanted to eat and he said madam aisa jagah hai it doesn't matter both of us sat down two days he remembers them. what did it do to me two years ago i had gone to kolhapur and we were passing his village and he said can you come home he wouldn't have had the guts to do that because he knows this woman has no qualms about sitting here. so leadership is not about managing your team leadership is about how do i make an impact and it doesn't matter whether you're man or woman and success like i keep saying is what you think is success 
Mm -hmm. I'm not going to let the world decide who I, whether I'm successful or not. It is my choice that I make that, yes, I am successful in whatever I do and I impact people. That's leadership for me. The rest of it, you know, it, it doesn't matter. Honestly, there's a tag. It's a visiting card. Thanks, Shanta. This has been a really energizing and I think inspiring and very insightful, I must say. I mean, conversation, a lot of food for thought, a lot of ways of doing things is better. So, Thank you so much. And uh, we, we, we really kind of owe it to you and, and your organization for doing some great work. And we wish you all the best on the way forward. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sudhi, for this opportunity. Compliment the work Pradhan does. You know, to be sustainable over long periods of time uh, and to continue to do, you know, the good and the impact for society. I think that's really commendable. You all are the people who actually motivate us. 